and welcome to The Journey is Real. I'm CJ Peterson, and today our guest is going to be Trav Bell. We're discussing a unique passion. His passion is, well, he's kind of known as the bucket list expert. So thanks for coming on today, Trav. CJ, stoked to be on your show. The journey really is real. Can't wait. It is. Um, you have a unique passion, to say the least. Um, how did this become your passion? How did you get known for being the bucket list guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So someone called me the bucket list guy uh, you know, about 10 years ago. So uh, up really, real quick backstory, if I may. Um, I, well, I grew up where I... Where... So go back as far as you need to, because I, my listeners... Really? Hear the, yeah, they like to hear the journey. Oh, this is the journey. Oh, the journey is very real. <laughs> and uh, so my journey started well I was I was three when I was in it no I won't go back that far but I, I'll go back to when I was about 18 so I, I um I grew up pretty much I think as you say in America as a jock um in surfing surf life saving swimming and this sort of thing so it naturally led me to uh do a human movement or physical education degree in my third year uni, I started this thing back in the early 90s called personal fitness training, which wasn't an industry back then. It is now. Though. Started personal training. And then, uh, yeah, started with one client, ended up, uh, I was the first to franchise personal training in Australia. So I franchised it, franchised personal training studios, ended up with tens of thousands of clients, over 2 million personal training sessions, heaps of personal trainers <laughs> working with us throughout the, you know, throughout the whole of Australia there. And, um, but I, um, some things happened in my life, personal and business stuff. Uh, you know, I sort of built, built this thing and, and life just got on top of me um, due to a few circumstances. Bit of a breakdown before breakthrough moment. The journey was very real. And <laughs> <laughs> I love how you've got, you know, if we're, we're, watch, if we're watching this, so people on the podcast, we're watching this and, and CJ's got, the journey is real. You know, above her head. So it's really good reminder for me as a guest to, to always <laughs> reference the journey is real. But the, I mean, if it's not real, if it's not authentic, if you're not vulnerable, there's no learnings. Mm -hmm. So my, you know, for me, I uh, slipped into a, a state of depression. Um, and you might be thinking, oh, you know, like, what do you got to complain about? But our own perception is our own reality, right? So, albeit mild compared to what I've heard since, you know, around depression, um, I, instead of going on like heavy antidepressants, which is kind of like a Band-Aid effect, if you ask me, I you wanted to, to get have, to, you know. You need to have the counseling yeah. with the medicine. Yeah, I wanted to get to the psychology. I wanted to get to where, because, you know, and I think a lot of people very, you know, self-medicate or, or should I say medicate um, and really hide, you know, hide the true, cause so i wanted to get to the cause i wanted to get to the psychology always curious so i found myself investing um in heaps of different courses and books and just went and i had to force myself to really do it and i did it for about a year I, you know learned nlp life coaching akagi principle law of attraction uh, life you know all these different positive psychology and I, work, I did work through a lot of my own stuff which was great um but a lot of confusion before the clarity, you know, again, the journey was very real. Well, <laughs> so kind of like you have to, it's kind of like cleaning out a room. You got to get it all in the center, kind of go through it, figure out what you're going to keep, what you're going to dump before oh, you can start to reorganize. hundred percent. I say, to, I say this CEO to a lot of people who have gone through a lot of stuff and I'm sure you do the same, mm -hmm. but we've all gone through stuff. Right. Um, and it's all, you know, we could just got to make sure that we're not we're not saying oh my my stuff's my stuff's more hardcore than your stuff. It's like our own perception is our own reality. It's, you also um, need to make sure that you're not saying well your stuff is harder so my stuff doesn't matter. There needs to be a balance in there. Yeah, I've got to be honest too. Like I was in a lot of these, especially like neuro linguistic programming, you know, life coaching courses, and I soon realised at that time that that. I really didn't have a lot to complain about. I mean, I'm adopted, but I love my parents. Who I, I just didn't come from any sort of broken home. I grew up not poor, not on the streets. You know, like I, I had a, a blessed upbringing. 
um, down here at Ocean Grove where my backyard is, is surfing. And I'm like, I was in what, you know, some of these seminars just going, getting this overwhelming sense of gratitude. A little quick story on that, which I don't tell very often, but I was in one of these, these seminars and I part, you know how you do it, you partner up with someone and you share your story, they share your, you know, theirs and, um, you know, it's a, it's a form of coaching in itself. And, um, and I shared my story, which is kind of what I've just said to you. And then I partnered with this kind of 40, probably 45 year old lady by the name of Deb. And she's like, thanks for your story, Trav. Now it's my turn. All right, Deb, why are you here? What's, what's your story? Mm-hmm. And she said, you know what, Trav, all that's well and good. But I, um, I'm single and I, I've, uh, I really wanted to have kids. And I've just come out of hospital. I've just had a hysterectomy and now I'm cured. I'm now clear of cancer. And I went, oh, that's heavy. What have I do? What? what? And, I, and I, we just hugged and she cried and I cried. And I'm, I'm like, oh, what, mate? What? I, in that moment, I became overwhelmingly grateful. Mm-hmm. Like, I've got excellent health. I've really got nothing to bitch about. I've got, you know, I've got, I've got, um, I've got this, uh, I've got this piece of DNA where I don't really, I'm not really fearful of public speaking. You know, I'm not really like, I get nerves, but I'm not really, it's not really a big fear for me. Whereas it's the biggest fear for a lot of people. And I'm like, dude, what gives you the right to not play a big, as big a game as you possibly can with what you've got? What, how dare you go through life playing small? So I got that. Mm-hmm. So compared to everyone else in the room at that time, including Deb, some people have been through all sorts of different abuse and relationship stuff and childhood stuff. And I'm like, I've got nothing. What have I got to do? Cut off an arm or something like that to, to just fit in? You know, so I've got something to, you know, to, to reference. But I got this sense of gratitude. And uh, anyway, I then went... Uh, a friend of mine, again, at the time said, hey, Trav, why don't you teach this stuff? And I went, light bulb moment. I went, uh, I went and put on a public seminar. I nearly had to pay 40, the 40 people who came to that to come to my public seminar. I was absolutely terrified. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what did you do it on? And in it, what's that? What did you do it on? What do you mean? I, I just... The seminar, what was it on? I've been... Yeah, I, it was like life coaching. It was motivation. I, it was embarrassingly, it was just everything that I'd learned in the, in, you know, with my stuff and my journey and, mm-hmm. and my entrepreneurial. I've never had a job, so I've always worked for myself. And so a lot of other entrepreneurs were in the room and things like that. But I just, I, I can't remember the title. It was something like how to be happier, happier, richer, skinnier, more successful or something like that. Cheesy as, like, like <laughs> so hey, it anyway. worked. You got at least 40 in the room so yeah 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 that's it yeah it so, start somewhere. I, I think they were there I think they were there more in pity or what the hell is he doing now you know so um but it was about halfway through this and I was really you know, I was really terrified and I'm, um I saw a speaker around that time and I thought it, it was a guy by the name of Alan Weiss um and I saw him present to a room of about, oh, it would have been about 500 people at the time. I, and I thought to myself at that point in time, in, the, in, in quite a low situation, if I could do that, what he's doing, and he had, he had no technology, no whiteboards, no flip charts. He had us crying, he had us laughing, he had us crying and laughing within minutes of each other. And I'm like, he had complete control of the room and, and commanded attention and he was, he was amazing. And I thought, if I could do that, I could do anything in life. And I, I and I, I, for me, that was the big domino that 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 I pushed over mm-hmm. in my in my life at that point in time. And so I, I I did this talk, had this Alan Weiss idea in my head that I I wanted to kind of be a speaker and let's see how we go. And it was about halfway through. I shared with everyone in the group the fact that I had a list to do before I die actually written down since I was 18, right? 
That's surprising. And, uh, not, no not one, eighteen year olds think of that. Yeah, no one knew this about me. I, I thought everyone wrote down their goals. I've been writing down my goals because my upbringing with with uh, with competitive sport. I thought everyone wrote down their goals, but and I and I said, who else has got one of these lists to do before you die? And I was like, no, nah. I was the only freak in the room. I said, well, why do you get out of bed in the morning? Why do you want to build your business? Why do you want more money? Why do you want more time? What what what's the why? Because wherever I went around in university and shared housing, I had my little blue folder with my lit written written down list. So it really inspired the group. And uh, and I started sharing some of the story. And then right at the end of it, Joe, one of our one of our, one of the participants at the time said, How's all this list to do before you die stuff? It's really fired everyone up. But it's like a bucket list. You're you're like the bucket list guy. I went light bulb. Light, light bulb moment and then I went home and registered the bucketlistguide.com and and you're like this CJ is I was on I was on the Google machine this is 10 years ago so I'm 47 now but 10 years ago um you know this uh, online world was just sort of starting up and I read the four hour work week as well thank you Tim Ferriss um who who I, I've had lunch with, who was on my bucket list to meet. So I ended up having lunch with Tim Ferriss when he came to Australia. Very cool. But this whole, so I had all these bricks and mortar kind of gyms all around Australia, businesses. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, I was kind of over it. I did 20 years in personal fitness training and I wanted to go on to, you know, pivot to online. I'd love to run everything from a hammock in Thailand, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so... <Thank> <laughs> It was a pretty sexy proposition and to, to go offline, you know, all these businesses to, to online. So I registered the bucket list guy and I was on online. I was like, all right, who's like the Mac daddy? Who's like the king of bucket lists in the world? Oh, look, no one. So I literally called myself the world's number one bucket list expert. Hey, it's, it's all in the perspective and it's all in the wording. And if there isn't another one, then it's you. Boom. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That is that. There it is. That is the journey is very. So I've been doing that for ten years now. I've been the bucket list guy for ten years. The coolest thing about it is I've, and as a serial entrepreneur, and I don't have to tell you this, you know, at the hardest thing about our uh, ADHD and you know everything, I, I call it high ADHD, definition. ADHD, the alphabet. A, yep. A H D ADHD. <laughs> so, um, but the hardest thing about that is is you know, staying in that lane, isn't it? it? Putting, keeping the blinkers on so you don't get the squirrel, you know, bright, shiny object syndrome. Yeah. Um, so I'm the good not, thing about it. I'm not doing like five things at once and kind of balancing those out. Then I tend to get bored and then I get in trouble. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, that, that, that's, um, yeah, I, I've, I'm, I, I'm so congruent with my message with this with this brand mm -hmm. that that it just uh, I've gone you know I, I heard someone's you know give me some advice once um, if you're going to do anything in life you know like go an inch wide and a mile deep not an inch deep and a mile wide and I thought you know what um, I just I just want I'm just going to focus on that and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I'm giving it a ten year plan and I've given it a ten year plan and it's reaped its rewards and now. You know, three years ago, so I've been running around, around the world mostly as a speaker and a coach, and but mo mainly as a keynote presenter. Um, having done the book as well, that's all part of it. And the TED Talk, that's all part of it. Mm -hmm. But three years ago, then we, we licensed out some of the intellectual property. And now we've got certified bucket list coaches teaching my stuff in 22, cool. countries, around, 22 countries around the world. So I play wow. founder, CEO of that as well. So you find a niche and that kind of helps people to have like a purpose, a, a reason. And well, the end result, to to. what the, what the whole, the whole thing is, right. What I teach is basically positive psychology, right? Mm -hmm. So positive psychology versus regressive psychology, regressive psychology helps a person to be normal, you know, and, and I'm doing air quotes here, guys, if you're, if you're watching, on the podcast. Normal is boring. <laughs> um, <Go ahead. laughs> so the so 
So regressive psychology, you go to a psychologist, you're talking about your backstory and they either give you drugs or give you some sort of methodology to get you normal again. So you can function in society. And I call it regressive psychology, but positive psychology. Um, so who the hell wants to be normal, right? Exactly. No one. Normal is boring to me. Yeah. It's like I'm unique but, and I'm that way for a reason. Yeah. But if you are, let's say uh, a bit left of center, not quite right. Well then, you know, psychology's definitely got its place. So you can function in society and not be a, a freaking serial, serial killer. Yes. Um, there are those. But, yeah. but for, the average. for us, for a, us average normal uh, people, um, we want something more. So we don't want to be normal. Um, so pos psych is really about identifying uh, what, what brings us meaning, what gives us purpose, what gives us fulfillment, what, what gives us more gratitude and also what are our strengths mm -hmm. and, and, do, and helping people to do identify and do more of that. So really I've studied this like a crazy person and put the, put the bucket list brand over the top of it to make it more tangible, to make it more fun, to make it more real for people. Mm -hmm. And, and it's born, you know, like it's all based on, on, on this theory but it's really helped people really over the last 10 years, amazing, amazing stories. And it's not just about writing a bucket list and going tick out a whole bunch of cool stuff off. What it really is, it's really about how a person reverse engineers every aspect of their, of their life in order to make this stuff come to fruition, right? It's a growth of them on this journey towards these self-imposed destinations. But more importantly, uh, CJ, it's all about the person that exists on the other side of their bucket list. This is the person that we don't know yet. And that's what I want people to get curiously excited about because we, people are dying at 40. People are, people are dying at 40 and being buried at 80. Yes. So many people are just existing. They're not living, um, living by default, not by design. So it's about it, that. The happiness guy was already taken, but I'll, I'll go with the bucket list guy. It's more, con <laughs> it's more, yeah, I, mean, uh, I have to say initially when I saw it, I'm like, why does he want to be on here? But hearing how you were explaining it, it makes so much sense. And I actually love the explanation. I love how you're, you're helping people without them kind of even almost realizing it. You know, you're helping them to find their true self and, you know, giving them a hope because it gives them something to continue to look forward to. But when you check off things off your bucket list, it does something inside of you. When you, like, for example, if it's traveling, when you see other parts of the world and see how other cultures and other people are living, it does something inside of you. It takes you out of your bubble and allows you to see everything more on a world perspective. Yeah, and, and that's why, like I did a TED talk a few years ago called Life's Too Short, and in that I, I introduced and unpacked, and that's what the book's about as well. And it's called the My Bucket List Blueprint. It's a 12-letter acronym for how to create, so it's M-Y-B-U-C-K-E-T-L-I-S-T, My Bucket List, it's 12 letters. Uh, so it's a 12-step program. It's a little bit like AA. <laughs> but it works. Yeah, without the drink, it you might need a drink at the end of it. Who knows? Um, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it what it does is help people unearth, identify all the cool things that they want to do in their life. Um, and and some big, some small. It's not just about travel. The T, in fact, at the end of the My Bucket List Blueprint is about travel adventures. A lot of people think about you know, think, think that bucket list is all about travel. But, but for me, when I started this journey is the fact that, that travel is expensive and it takes a lot of time and people don't get to do it, do a lot of the travel they want to do until retirement. Right. So I want, I want people to be happier now, not wait until later on because later on may never come, you know, like the whole movie, the bucket list was about two blokes as we saying here in Australia, two blokes have got given a cancer diagnosis and then they write a bucket list, which is stupid. And I've based my whole, my whole, my whole existence on this stupid movie because it's, it's about, I want to wake people up before they get before given they get a use by, yeah. before they get given a use by day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I love that. So you wrote a book because we've referenced mm. it a couple of times and it's called the bucket list. How can people find that online? 
uh, My Bucket List Blueprint. That's what it's called by Trav Bell. Travis Bell. It's got my full name on it. There you go. Um, so, yeah, they can go to Amazon, of course. But if they want a signed copy, uh, they can go to thebucketlistguy.com forward slash book. And I can send one over. So I've been sending them. I just released it just before Christmas um, in a mad rush. Thanks to COVID. I can't believe I'm saying thank you, COVID. Thank you, lockdowns. Um, I actually finished it. So it's only about a centimetre thick, which is kind of pathetic after 10 years, isn't it? <laughs> Compared like, to what you've done. <laughs> thank you. Um, but that's still, it's its a small but powerful. You know what? I, I, I'm, I'm stoked that it took so long and I did it when I did it because, um, and I, I really didn't want it to be just an, another expensive business card, which a lot of people kind of, you know, do a book, you know, speakers who do a book just to get a book done. I, it's actually changing people's lives because I'm getting people to do it, to go through the My Bucket List Blueprint with their families with their couple, you know, as a couple, which, which uh, right now with, with COVID, company. still coming out of people uh, coming out, they have the time to do yeah. that as a family. <clears throat> well, the thing is, yeah, and it's and it, you know, like with COVID and everything going on right now, um, what it's been, you know, I've I've done a lot of media lately and podcasts and the, talking about the book and everything uh, because positive psychology really, uh, really is I, I the the non the non-drug related cure mm -hmm. uh, problem fixer for mental health mm -hmm. right so so this is this is really coming to point in you know, a significant time where it's helping people recalibrate on that on, on on what this new definition of work what i call work-life blend actually looks like because everyone's redefining that everyone you know the whole world has taken this big collective deep breath in and recalibrated, right? And, and and they've innovated, they've adapted, they're, they're collaborating like we are right now, like mm -hmm. never before. And uh, and and it's really helped people readjust and and move the chess pieces in their favour. And mm -hmm. you know, people are changing a lot right now about how their work looks, how their business looks. Um, you know, and reconnected with family as well, which has been a really good side effect. There's been some really bad side effects with this whole COVID thing. But there have been some really good ones. Right. And the key is to always find the good. I try to find the good in just about everything, even if it looks terrible. <laughs> um, people can find you online. I know you mentioned it a couple of times. What's your website one more time? Thebucketlistguy.com. Okay. So that's T-H-E-B-U-C-K-E-T-L-I-S-T-G-U-Y.com. We have about three minutes left. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I mean, I... I the, the, what I'm getting people to do, obviously, if they grab a book, great. But what's a TED talk as well? What's what's um what I want people to do, I guess, after listening and watching this, CJ, is to actually write a bucket list. Mm -hmm. I know. Remember, remember these things. Now I'm holding up. What what's this, CJ? It's one of those multicolored pens with like four different colors of ink. We used to have yeah, them. I loved them. We got them in high school. I think is what it was. Yeah, wow. yeah. And, and, We're and, actually and about the, the same and, age. And what's and what's this? What's this, CJ? That would be a pencil. Yep. And 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 what's this stuff that's in here? He's holding up a journal. So that's it's called paper. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's a revelation for you. All right. If you put this pen to paper and you write this is magical thing, this consciousness exercise that actually happens. <laughs> I'm being facetious, of course. It does, but, but it's like when they see it you, black and white, it, it has a whole different spin. There's so so guys, whether it's you know, people don't people don't write down their goals, let alone bucket list items. So what's easy to do is easy not to do. So I want you to read it, read the book. What's a TED talk? What, whatever. Just start writing your bucket list. If you actually write your bucket list down, you've got a forty-six percent more likelihood of it actually manifesting. You're nearly halfway there. So if you actually just write stuff down, you're halfway there, guys. The thing is, your bucket list is up there with your daily to-do list, and guess which one gets done first? And and life gets in the way, and that takes priority until something traumatic or dramatic happens to you or a loved one. That don't let that be the wake-up call. Don't let 
you know, a doctor in a white coat give you a diagnosis and that's when you go, oh, yeah, I remember that podcast that CJ did with that bucket list something, something guy um, way back then. I should have, you know, I, I, yeah, I should have done maybe something back then that 10 years ago. So, no, now is the time to do this. Use Easter. Use, use, oh, whenever this comes out, Easter, whenever this comes The US will um, come out near Memorial Day. Near Memorial Day. All right. That's a great time to do this. So, you know what? That summer. You don't need a special time. day or time. It could, it, it, it just, whenever it gets, take some time out of your life to work on your life, mm-hmm. go through the My Bucket List blueprint, put this stuff to pen, pen to paper and go and do, and make it as big as possible. I've got 350 things myself. And, uh, and oh, by the way, send it to me. So I've got a link or just send it to me. Trav at the bucket list guy.com, email it to me. I'm collecting 396, 300, hang on, how many days in a year? 365. 365 bucket lists right now for book number two. So um, send it to me, random the better, no judgment, as big or as small, it doesn't matter. Um, but I want, I want you to send it to me. So this is the accountability piece. Mm-hmm. And, and when you've done that, and when you've dumped it out of your head, brain dumped it, I want you to go and do the, the, the easiest thing that you can possibly do on your list. And that'll give you the momentum and motivation to smash through the bigger ones. It's the bucket list snowball effect that, I, that, that we're trying to create here. That's brilliant advice. Thank you so much, Trev, for sharing your heart. We really appreciate it um, and sharing your vision. Um, good luck on your next book. I'm really excited for you. Um, you have a lot of energy and enthusiasm, so it's going to serve you well. Um, thank coffee. You. It's coffee, 8 o'clock in the morning over here in Australia. <laughs> but thank you for coming on and thank you for waking up to do the podcast with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those who want to learn more about Trav Bell and The Bucket List, you can head over to www.thebucketlistguy.com. That's T-H-E-B-U-C-K-E-T-L-I-S-T-G-U-Y.com. And thank you for joining us today on The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. I'm CJ Peterson of cjpetersonwrites.com. Until next time.